What's up guys, my name is Marius and I am the creator of the BX Crispy Tuner. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly get a pitch corrected vocal using simple and advanced mode. Let's go. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. I guess the only thing I need is you and me in harmony. So I've prepared a channel here with a few basic effects, an equalizer, a bunch of compression, and the BX Crispy Tuner as the first plugin in the chain. I recommend you to always put the BX Crispy Tuner as the first plugin in chain so it can do its magic on the unaltered signal. And as you can see here in the Crispy Tuner, in simple mode, we only have two steps that we need to follow to get a tuned vocal. First of all, you gotta tell the Crispy Tuner which notes are allowed, so which notes it can use, which notes are on the scale. And secondly, you adjust the tuning strength. Now, if you do not know which scale your song is in, then you're in luck. We have the BX Crispy Scale plugin to automatically detect the key of any instrumental. So let's just open the BX Crispy Scale plugin, which is on our instrumental track here. And all you gotta do is hit detect scale and play back the audio in your DAW. Sally. <laughs> Why won't you wake up? So the BX Crispy Scale plugin now analyzes the instrumental and as you can see it output D major as the most likely scale. There are also two alternative scales that could work once we have the parallel minor scale and A major which could also be um, a potential hit but I know for a fact that in this case it's D major so the Crispy Scale plugin gave us the right result. Now we could go over uh, to the Crispy Tuner and just put D major here manually, or what we can also do is simply hit the send to BX Crispy Tuner button. And as you can see, the Crispy Scale's current scale is being transmitted to the Crispy Tuner. So now we don't need the Crispy Scale plugin anymore and have completed the first step. Now that we've set the correct scale using the BX Crispy Scale plugin, we can move on to getting some tuned vocals. Now, I do not have a track recorded yet, as you can see, but uh, one feature of the Crispy Tuner is the live mode, which means that you can get tuned vocals with no latency, meaning you can hear yourself with your tuned voice while recording. And that's what we're going to be setting up now. So first of all, let's make sure that we are in live mode. Mixing mode is good for editing and rendering the audio, but it adds some latency, which we do not want when recording. So. I'm just going to enable input monitoring here in Logic. Turn down the output. And now I can hear myself with uh, a tuned vocal. As you can hear, uh, there's quite a few effects on there. Um, but you can hear that my voice is being tuned. Now, as you can hear, when uh, setting the tuning knob to the very right, it is the most extreme tuning setting. I'm just gonna... As you can hear, the tuning effect is pretty extreme, but if we set it to something a bit higher, you can still hear the effect, but it's, uh, it sounds more natural, it's less robotic. All right, so now that I can hear myself with the effect, it's time for me to record some vocals. Enjoy. I see your face when I'm asleep, you make me strong and All right, now that we're done recording, we can go back to the Crispy Tuner and switch to mixing mode. This is going to slightly improve the quality of the tuned vocal while introducing some latency. So again, while you're recording live, live mode, while you're mixing, mixing mode. So let's just play around with the tuning knob a little bit and see how different strengths affect the sound of the vocal. I'm going to mute my high harmony vocal there. I see your face when I'm asleep You make me strong and yet so weak I guess the only thing I need Is you and me in harmony So 
as you could hear, the further right we turn the tuning knob, the more robotic and unnatural the tuned vocal sounds. The more to the left we put it, the more of my suboptimal singing uh, can be heard. So ideally you always want to find the sweet spot between out of tune and too robotic, too unnatural. And I always recommend listening to your tune vocal in the context of the instrumental when determining how strongly you want to tune it. So I think uh, a sweet spot for us here is probably around like eight milliseconds. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. I guess the only thing I need is you and me in harmony. Great, I think that sounds very, very nice. Now uh, we've also recorded some high backing vocals where again we've uh, turned to mixing mode and I'm just gonna let you listen to these. You make me strong and yet so weak It's you and me in harmony So since this is going to be pretty much in the background of the mix just as a support of the main vocal we can get away with some stronger tuning because you're not going to hear it that clearly and it's going to make the mix sit very nicely together and very strongly support the main vocal. Let's listen to it. I see your face when I'm asleep You make me strong and yet so weak I guess the only thing I need Is you and me in harmony So let me just play that back to you um, to show how much work the BX Crispy Tuner is actually doing. First, I'm going to disable the Crispy Tuner on both tracks. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. Yeah, it's not that great, but with the Crispy Tuner on. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. Even I can sound like a somewhat decent singer. And that's it. That's how easily and quickly we've whipped up a song with pitch correction on the vocals using the BX Crispy Tuner's simple mode. Now, if we want some more detailed control over the BX Crispy Tuner sound, let's switch over to advanced mode. And as you can see, we have a few more options here. We have transition time, tightness, correction, form and preservation and form and shift, transposing, pitch range, etc, etc. And I just quickly want to break down each of these settings for you. But if you have any more detailed questions, feel free to consult the manual. So the first thing you'll notice is that instead of a single tuning knob, like we have it in simple mode, we now have the transition, tightness and correction knobs. And I'm just going to quickly visualize for you um, what each of these settings do. And for that, we're going to switch in graphical mode. Uh, this tutorial is not about graphical mode, but I'm going to go in more detail on how to use graphical mode in a later video. So what you can see here in graphical mode is the red line being the input pitch, the original untuned signal, and the green line being the corrected signal. So if I just play around with transition time, tightness and the correction amount here, you can see how it transforms the pitch of the tuned vocal. Now, this is very good to demonstrate these settings uh, separately. So the transition time specifies how quickly the notes transition from one to another in the case of a note change. As you can see, the higher the value of the transition time, the longer it takes for the notes to arrive at their target destination and the shorter, the more robotic. So I'm just going to play that back for you to hear. I see your face when I'm now, if we bring up the transition time a little bit, the tuned vocal is still going to be very much uh, in the center of the note without much wiggle room for uh, vocal inconsistencies, but the transitions are going to sound more human. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. Compare that with the very robotic sound of a transition time of zero ms. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. So that's the effect of transition time. For the tightness, as you can see, the more relaxed the tightness setting is, 
the more the output pitch is allowed to deviate from the perfect center of the note, giving it more of the human characteristic, human element uh, that is found in natural singing voices, like you're never dead on pitch. Uh, there's always some deviation and the tightness setting allows you to specify how much of that deviation to let through. Now, you've already heard it with a transition time of zero and a tightness of zero. Um, let me just increase the tightness a bit so that you can hear the difference it makes. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. I guess the only thing I need. As you can see, it sounds a little more shaky. And uh, in some cases, that's exactly what we want because it makes it sound more human, less robotic. Uh, especially for backing vocals, um, it makes sense to have them slightly deviate from the perfect pitch of the main vocal that is uh, in front of the mix, um, just to give it a richer quality. And finally, we have the correction amount setting, which basically just interpolates between the output of the transition time and tightness corrected pitch uh, with the input pitch. So as you can see, the higher we set the correction amount, the more it's going to um, go towards the tune signal using the above settings. Now that I've shown to you what each of these three settings do, we can move on to format manipulation. As you can see, we have both format preservation and format shift here. And to illustrate what a format actually is, let me just shift the format up by an octave and you'll very quickly know what I mean. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and get so weak. I guess the only thing I need is you and me in harmony. So shifting the format retains the actual pitch of the sung vocal. However, it changes the characteristic of how high or low pitch it is perceived. So if you shift it up, it's going to give you a chipmunk-like effect. And if you shift it down, you're going to sound like a monster, deeper, deeper voice, while having the same pitch. So you can use this for some uh, quite nice effects in your vocals. And as you can hear, it's still perfectly fits the instrumental because we're not actually changing the pitch, just the vocals format. Now, format preservation is a little bit tricky to explain, but basically, if you've set it to 100%, um, you are going to sound very natural, even when the input and output pitch has a very uh, big difference between it. However, you're going to hear some uh, chipmunk or monster-like artifacts whenever the um, pitch is being very different from the input pitch if you turn it off. Let's just listen to it. I see your face when I'm asleep. You As you can hear, the glitches when the note transitions happen are exaggerated uh, with form preservation turned off. If you turn it on, it sounds more natural. I see your face when I'm asleep. Let me play that again without form preservation. I see your face when I'm asleep. You it's a subtle effect, but um, especially when working with a transition time and tightness that is very small. Uh, setting this to 0% can accentuate the pitch correction tuning effect that you sometimes want to use as a style choice. So you can just play around with that and hear what sounds good for you. Next up, we have the transpose slider. So what this does is you can set it to one, two, three, etc. steps. And what that means is it doesn't just pitch up your voice by three semitones. Instead, it goes three steps up on the scale that you have specified, allowing you to create a harmony that is in scale using just a single slider. To demonstrate that, I'm just going to duplicate the vocal here and play around with the transposition slider here. And now, check this out. I see your face when I'm asleep. You make me strong and yet so weak. I guess the only thing I need is... Now, let's play that together with uh, the original vocals to see what harmony we created. I see your face when I'm asleep. 
As you can hear, we very quickly created uh, a harmony that is in key and sounds pretty good if you ask me. So that's how you can create a quick and simple harmony using the transposition feature. The final setting here is the pitch range and this is basically just to help the crispy tuner know where it needs to look for your input pitch. Uh, for example, if you set the pitch range to bass, it's not going to detect anything uh, over an E4 and we can just uh, drag that pitch range uh, around to make it a little bit easier for the crispy tuner as well. We can adjust it like this too. So basically if you know you're only going to be singing within one vocal register within one area uh, then just tell the crispy tuner look these are the notes that you need to look for only these uh, between those two bars um, are what's being listened to and in some cases, it may improve the results that you're getting, but in most cases, the generic pitch range that is preset is going to work very well. And that's it. I hope that my little overview of the BX Crispy Tuner simple and advanced mode was useful to you, and I honestly can't wait to hear what you guys come up with. As always, stay tuned and see you next time.